So I was having this argument with a couple of colleagues some days ago, and what was the argument? It was doctors and nurses don't do anything in HMOs. They just go there to chill. They get a company driver, do their nine to five, and they're all balling and chilling. And I'm like, hell no, that's not true. They actually work serious work in the HMO. You know, and a lot of them didn't believe me until I started telling them what I used to do uh, in the HMO space where I was still working in HMO. And they were like, wow, okay, you guys actually work. So, and I won the argument. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be telling you what doctors and nurses and other health, healthcare professionals in the HMO. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Ron. If you're new to the channel, I talk about everything healthcare and things that happen behind the scenes in healthcare. If you're a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you for sticking around. It's because of you, uh, the ministry is moving to the permanent site. So you might want to stick around to the end of the video where I'll run through in no particular order some of the day-to-day -day activities that healthcare workers do in the HMOs. So for context, HMOs are health maintenance organizations and commonly, I mean, they're like health insurance companies. You hear things like Reliance Health, you hear things like Novo Health, you hear things like uh, maybe Zenith, Venus Medicaid, and all of that. So they are all HMOs. So they are, they are just private insurance, health insurers, right? So clients pay them to be taken care of. So if, if I have a company, I sign up with the HMO, and when any of my staff, they are sick, they just go to whatever hospital and at the end of the they don't worry about the bill because I've paid the HMO and at the end of the month the HMO pays the hospital. So that's typically how the HMO thing thing works. Now as a healthcare professional working in the HMO, then the question is so what do you really do every day? I mean you're supposed to be seeing patients, you know, doing surgeries and all of that. And I'm like, well, I mean that neatly ties into my last uh, a couple of videos back where I talked about 10, 20 alternative careers that doctors can do. You might want to look for that video in my channel and you know, watch it. And this is one of them, you know, moving to the HMO space or, you know, working as HMO officer or even owning an HMO, right? So it's all possible. So in no particular order, I'll talk about things um, they do in the HMO office space. So full disclosure, I used to work for a HMO before. So uh, I'm talking from my own experience and firsthand knowledge of what I used to do uh, every day working for the HMO. So the first one, in no particular, like I said, is to do case reviews. Now, case reviews are basically me going to the hospital to probably ask questions about uh, a particular patient. Maybe there's a patient that had been admitted for some reason, issues became complicated or, I mean, staying longer than necessary, or they are needing very complex interventions and all of that. So one of the things you do as a healthcare person in the HMO is to do a case review where you go to the hospital, you know, talk to your colleagues because they are still your colleagues. You talk to them, ask them questions, what's going on, and all of that. Because from the business side, which the HMO is looking at, I mean, all those uh, stay and complex interventions and all of that is, um, how would I put it now? It's costing money again, but also, I mean, the information garnered from those reviews usually help in terms of, you know, quality assurance. Okay. How can we prevent this type of thing in the future and all of that too. So you'll be doing a lot of case reviews. Then the second one is, um, quality assurance. Now, um, Quality assurance in the sense that for every provider or hospital signed up to the network, I mean, each HMO or most of HMOs I know, they usually have quality standards that they expect the hospitals to meet to be able to, you know, provide the level of care they want for their clients. So it's also one of your duties to ensure that hospitals are sticking to those um, standards. Uh, I remember I used to do... Um, hospital visits, I had a checklist where we visit the hospital, you know, make sure things are other simple things like, okay, there's an oxygen cylinder in the A and E, there's a crash cart, and you actually have medications inside. Is the A and E well equipped? Is the consulting rooms, are they comfortable? You know, things like that. So 
that keeps everybody in check sort of so that you are sure your clients are getting the care quality care they need so quality assurance is one of the things you'll be doing then another thing is vetting of claims now this is the one that usually you know <laughs> breaks people's back because it's usually very hectic because it's manually done do i know some hmos are beginning to see ways to sort of automate this process so vetting of claims means now at the end of the month hospital a collates the bills of all the patients they've treated and sends it to the hmo for them to get paid or reimbursed for that treatment so vetting of the claims is is what um how would i put it now is where you sit down you look at the bill and you're trying to establish if it really you know meets the criteria for being paid so for example um you have a diagnosis of malaria um, and you're on the bill you're seeing things like antibiotics maybe like augmenting uh you're seeing things like superfluxacin amoxicillin you know and you begin to wonder where does augmenting come in the management of malaria right so you want to vet that you don't want to pay for that because that's wrong practice really so that's all vetting is you know looking through to make sure what they what they are doing is in line so some people will argue i mean this is not good it's not nice you know cutting because vetting of the claim essentially means you you know denying them certain payments because the hospital has given up augmenting and they are not getting paid for that but that's another conversation for another day but the focus is just that you'll be vetting claims now another thing you'll be doing is provider expansion provider expansion means you're you'll be adding more hospitals to the existing network of providers for the hmo so if for instance i've got um some clients who live say in ikorodu so it's the job of the hmo to go to ikorodu to look for hospitals around the ikorodu and sign them up to the network so that if i have staff that live in ikorodu i don't expect them to start driving all the way to Sule where i stay or heading to Lekki just to get care so they're able to get care where they live so that's what provider expansion really does so you add more hospitals on the existing provider network then another thing you do is um, health talks and seminars so i know some hmos offer this to some of their clients maybe in terms of monthly health seminars or quarterly health seminars or yearly seminars depending on how they want to run it so it's is the hmo coming to teach clients you know for example maybe on world hypertension day or world diabetes day or aids day the, the doctor or the nurse they they organize a little presentation where they talk about all these things and teach them or sometimes you, you might be taxed with the responsibility of organizing it and bringing in external speakers to come and teach at this event so you'll be doing health talks and seminars another thing you'll be doing is um tariff negotiation so tariff negotiation i think that ties in or goes hand in hand with the provider expansion provider expansion means i'm bringing on bringing a new hospital to the network but the hospital will usually have their own tariff for how much they want to be paid for each service they provide so you usually do some bit of tariff negotiation you know i'm um, charging a uh, one million naira for this procedure you are like uh, no let's do 900 or 950 or thereabout so that's another conversation for another day but you'll be doing a lot of tariff negotiation and another thing you also do is um issuing of pa codes pa means pre-authorization code so <laughs> there are some certain services or that clients might need to assess that they need to call the HMO to get clearance to be able to give clients that service. So that is where the HMO now issues the pre-authorization code or the PA code. So you're going to be getting a lot of calls from hospitals. And we have your clients here. We need to do so, so, so tests. You give us go ahead and you generate the code and you send to them and you document it on your end and all of that. So you're doing a lot of PA codes. Now in some HMOs too, you might be involved in a little bit of marketing. 
right? I did a little bit of marketing when I was in the HMO space. So you might be doing a little bit of marketing. Some people say, ah, doctor, nurse, they do marketing and all of that. So, but I think it usually comes in handy. I mean, no skill is a waste, really. So you might do a little bit of marketing. Then the last but not the least, you'll be resolving a lot of client queries, you know. For example, patient goes to hospital A, patient is not happy with the service received or the medications or whatever it is. Most times they will call the HMO. I went to hospital A, I didn't like how I was treated, this is what happened, blah, 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 and all of that. So it's for you to now sit down, you know, listen and, you know, solve the issue or escalate the issue as the case may be so you, you likely be getting a lot of those calls or complaints and you should be able to you know deal with them effectively and efficiently yes yeah, so i think from my experience those are some of the major things i was doing during the hmo space so which every other person might do so the scope might have increased i, I don't know because i'm not in that space at the moment then uh, I usually get this question too, how much are doctors paid in the HMO space right now? So I think you should be looking at within maybe like 250 to 350 entry level. Don't quote me, but I think um, that's what the market range is at the moment. I asked a couple of friends and they told me this is what they end. So if you're entering the HMO space, then this is what the pay range usually looks like then yes i forgot to mention there's a lot of traveling involved or there might be a lot of traveling involved depending on the region uh you're managing or you're overseeing you know for you to visit hospitals you need to move around i mean for my case uh, i was i think i was monitoring the was it south 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 east region so that meant a lot of traveling Bayelsa, imo state abia calabar Ibom. Uh, Port Harcourt, where again? Yeah, a lot of traveling the south, south, southeast region. Yeah, it was exciting because you get to see new people and yeah, you have your company car. I don't even know if it's everybody that gives you a company car anyway, but I mean, it's something nice. So, yes, that's my experience. So, I just thought I'd share that. So, for people who wonder what doctors or healthcare workers do in the HMO, these are some of the things they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's not just doctors that work in HMO. There are doctors there, there are nurses there, there are med lab scientists, there are any cadre of healthcare worker can actually work in the HMO space. So there are a lot of transferable, transferable skills that you move from the clinic into the HMO space. So you don't lose anything really. So Thank you for watching and I hope it's been quite educative. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel and share with your friends too about the beautiful information you've been getting from this channel. And until I come your way next time, I still remain your host, Dr. Ron. Bye for now.